In this video, I'll be introducing some elements that are new to HTML5 and we'll use these elements to build a web page. In the next video, we'll be using CSS to style the page and control the layout. This will be our finished web page. The focus of this video will be using these new HTML5 elements to build the structure of a web page. Since we will not be using CSS until the next video, this is what our web page will look like at the end of this video. Even though we'll be using CSS in the next video, it's not my intent to teach the basics of CSS. I have another video series that covers CSS. But what I want to do is to demonstrate using CSS to lay out a web page so that you can see how HTML and CSS work together. These are the new HTML5 elements that I'll be covering. All of these elements can contain other elements. For example, here is a header element used to contain an H1 heading element and a paragraph element. Not only can these elements contain other elements, but they can also tell you something about how these elements are being used. Here's an example to show what I mean. These elements are contained within a header element, so we know they are being used as header information. The navigation element contains some links. The main element contains the main content of the web page. And the footer element contains footer information. So these new elements can make it easier for us to understand the content of a web page. These new elements can also help computers to better understand the content. But why is it beneficial for computers to understand the content? Two common reasons that are given is that it benefits search engines and that it also benefits screen readers. Screen readers are software programs that can be useful to people who are blind or visually impaired. Now since these elements are new to HTML5 and therefore didn't exist when older browsers were made, the older browsers may display them differently than the newer browsers. Fortunately, there are some things that can be done to overcome this problem. I'll be covering this topic in the next video. Now let's jump in and start building a web page. We'll start with a basic template. This web page is about news, and so I'll title it News. Now in the body section, let's add a header element. The header element can be used to group elements together that are used for introductory content of a section. In this case, the introductory content is for the whole page. Inside the header, I've added an H1 heading element for the name or title of the website. I've also added a paragraph element to give a description of the type of news. Let's take a look at this in the browser. Now let's use the nav element to add a navigation section. This element is primarily intended for major navigation blocks and so you don't need to use it for every link that you may have on your web page. We're using it here because it will contain the main links of our website. This element is an unordered list element and it's not new to HTML5. It's used to represent a list of items and in this case we're using it for a list of links. A list item element is used for each item within the unordered list and I've placed a link inside of each of them. It's common practice to use an unordered list for a group of navigation links. This is what it looks like in the browser. Here is the navigation section. These markers are displayed because we're using an unordered list for the links. In the next video, we'll be using CSS to lay out the links horizontally and the markers will not be present. For now, however, I'll be primarily focusing on the content of the elements rather than how they're displayed in the browser. Next, let's add a main element. This is where the main content of the web page will be located. For this web page, the main content will have two sections, one for local news and one for national news. So let's add two section elements. A section element is used to group together a generic block of related content. We're using this first section for local news, so let's begin the section by using a heading element to identify it. Now let's add an article element. An article element is used for a complete or self-contained composition. So independent content that can stand all on its own is suitable to be put into an article element. We're using it for a self-contained news story. A header element can be used inside of an article element. So let's use one to group together a heading element and a paragraph element. We'll use the heading element for the news story title and the paragraph element for the author and date of the story. 
Now we'll add paragraph elements after the header element for the new story itself. Let's take a look at this in the browser. This is the content of the section element, and this is the content of the article element. Now let's add a second news story. This has the same elements as above, but with a different news story. Let's look at this in the browser. This is the first news story, and this is the second one. We're using our second section element for national news. We'll begin this section with a heading element to identify it. Now let's add two news stories, just like we did above. This is what it looks like in the browser. Here is the local news section with our two news stories. And here is the national news section with two news stories. Now we're going to add content that will be used for our sidebar. We'll use the aside element for this. The aside element is used for content that is separate from, but related to, the content around it. So what you put inside this element depends on where it's located. If it were located inside of one of the article elements, then it should be related to that specific article. Since we're using it outside of the article elements, directly in the body section, it's related to the web page as a whole. We're using it to ask people for news tips. Other uses for this element can include things like advertising or groups of navigation elements. The aside element is frequently styled as a sidebar, but it doesn't have to be. Now let's look at it in the browser. Here's the content of the aside element. In the next video, after we add CSS styling, the aside element will be displayed as a sidebar. Now let's add a footer to the web page, and we can do this by using a footer element. There are various things that you might want to put in a footer. For example, you could use it for copyright information or links to related web pages or contact information, but you're not limited to these things. Our footer element is located directly in the body section, and so it represents a footer for the whole page. We could have also placed a footer element inside of an article element, which would represent footer information specifically for that article. Let's take a look at this in the browser. This is our footer information. We're done now with the basic structure of the web page. In the next video, we'll be using CSS to make this web page look like this. Well, that concludes this video. You can find the code used in this video at littlewebhut.com. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.